Um, and it's, it's, it's powerful because you see the veterans getting dressed up, they get jobs. We're able to, you know, bring in resources. I'm able to connect them to the right people if they need resources. And, uh, you know, it, it can go a lot of different directions, but yeah, there was no plan on this five and a half, six years ago. We just kind of found ourselves here and, uh, it works. You are listening to And I Quote, a podcast focused on building relationships with insurance agents, brokers, their small business clients, and industry leaders. This podcast is presented by Coterie Insurance. With your hosts, Brian Thomas, Director of Claims Experience, and Ann Boger, VP of Scaling, we will be exploring the power that connection, communication, and commitment can have on your business. Join us every Thursday for a new episode and topic that will provide key insights to help build your business, agency, and client relationships. And I quote. Welcome to the And I Quote podcast, brought to you by Coterie Insurance. I am your co-host, Ann Boger, VP of Scaling, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Rob Bowen, owner of Patriotic Insurance, a veteran-owned and operated insurance company serving New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Welcome to the show, Rob. Thank you, and thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this. So how did you get into insurance in the first place? <laughs> like, like everybody else, I fell into it. So after a stint at, down on Wall Street, uh, prior to that in the military, at age 50, I decided I didn't want to work for anybody anymore. And so seven years ago, I I started with farmers, opened up an insurance agency, did that for about five and a half years and went independent about 18 months ago. And uh, this is not an industry you just decide, you know, little little boys and girls don't don't say, I want to be an insurance agent one day. You know, they want to be astronauts and cowboys and whatever. Uh, But this is a great industry. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Every day is an adventure, like I like to say, because you never know what's going to happen. Um, but it's an, it's a rapidly changing industry right now, which I love, um, because there's a lot going on. Um, and you guys are part of that wave of, if you call it indie tech and sure tech, whatever we want to call it, it's applying technology to some of the antiquated processes and systems that we have in insurance, um, and making things a little easier for all of us independent agents. So it's, uh. It's a fun time to be in the industry. Yeah. And what was that like going independent? That's less than two years ago. Was that a big shift or did, did, was it pretty natural? Um, it's pretty natural, I think. Um, I think the, the hardest part was uh, going independent and there's so many different ways to do everything and so many different systems, whether it's be management, whether it be CRM, whether whatever. And I'm a, I'm a squirrel, honestly, I will chase everything. Um, so I'm learning to stop and not keep introducing new technology into my office. Um, but I found that this industry is full of very smart people that are willing to help you. So I connected, you know, you're only as smart as, you know, you don't ever want to be the smartest guy in the room, right? That's not a problem for me most of the time. But if you surround yourself with people smarter and have done this for 20 years, you're going to go quicker, right? You won't run into as many roadblocks. You won't make as many mistakes. So that was the first thing I did is I joined a lot of masterminds. I listened to a ton of podcasts and I just reach out to people. I mean, they're on a podcast. I reach out to them. I don't really care. It's like, Hey, my name's Rob. Here's what I do. Can you, do you have an hour to talk about what you talked about on the podcast? And I've never been turned down. And that's not a tribute to me. That's just a tribute to the people in the industry that are willing to help. Um, we have a I guess we have a stereotype of the uh, old agent, um, and that's me. Mm-hmm. I mean, the average agent is 58, white, male, pale, and stale. That's exactly what I am. I'm 58, <laughs> and I'm white, and I am. I call me old, whatever. But uh, we're bringing in new, new blood, which I think is awesome. We're bringing in diversity. We're bringing, you know, it, all of that's happening. Probably not as fast as people wanted to, but we're getting there. And I think that's really, really important for our industry. So I I love where this industry is going. I like the people in it. Um, And I like the companies, the companies that, I mean, not every company is great, but most of them are. And it's, you know, it's fun just to meet people and help them. And, you know, everyone's willing to help everyone else, which I really like. So. And 
I love what you just said, uh, especially about the importance of connecting with other people in the industry and how much the insurance industry in particular is built on relationships and, and that give and take and that, that ability to just reach out to someone seems like probably part of what makes you successful as an, as an agent. Um, are there advice, is there advice you would give someone who's just starting out in the industry? Um, what I, what I would say to do is reach out to as many of the people go to, go to conventions, go to masterminds, you know, there's IAOA, which is one of the largest groups out there, which is all owners. Um, that's about 8,000. They have an annual conference. Um, it's terrifying in the vendor hall when there's 170 vendors and you're just like, Ooh, I need all of this. Uh, but you get to meet a lot of really interesting people. And I think the biggest advice I'd give someone is, you know, you can be part of the larger masterminds. I'm part of one that's like 150 people, but try to have small accountability groups because our biggest problem is you go to these events, we can all Google everything. You know, I can Google Hawksoft and now certs and all these different management systems, but you need a, a, an accountability group or a partner that's going to hold you to it because, you know, you come back from a conference on a Friday night, take the weekend to relax. You come in Monday morning and the world hits you um, and you never get anything done. So I've learned that the hard way. So this is all experience speaking, but I think that's what you need to do. You need to have a plan. And you need to have someone you, that holds you accountable to that plan of, okay, you said you were going to get this done in two weeks or a month or whatever it is, um, because that way you'll keep moving forward. Um, if not, you go right back to where you were. That's why the insurance industry is, in some cases, is exactly the same way it was 30 years ago. I mean, there's still conversations about how do you do electronic signatures? <laughs> and again, this is coming from a 58-year-old, so I'm allowed to say this. How is that even a question? As you bring in more tools into your agency to help things just run smoothly, I imagine that gives you more time to focus on building relationships with clients rather than chasing around pieces of paper. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about building relationships with your clients or just even within your community? Yes. So this is a relationship business. The, the, big, the big direct insurance carriers are transactional based. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? They're not building relationships. They're, they're doing transactions. And, and that's a, we need that part of the industry, obviously. Um, but as an insurance agent and owning an agency and having a physical location and all of that, we can build tremendous relationships and um, I think what's important is, yes, we're trying to build relationships with potential clients, but honestly, everybody needs insurance. So I believe in building relationships with other parts of my community. You know, we have a platform that we can use and we can leverage that platform and leverage what we do every day to build relationships that maybe are community based. Maybe we want to help the homeless shelter. Maybe we want to help whatever. Um, but you need to, um, uh, you need to use, do what you do every day and build those relationships. And that's how you can really have an effect on people. Um, and I've been preaching that for a while and it works because it's a different conversation when you're talking about helping your community than it is about selling insurance. No one wants to hear about insurance, honestly. So you build the relationships, the insurance just happens. Now it takes years to build these. This is not an overnight success, but once you've built them, your referral system, your community base, people know you for who you are. It's your personal brand, right? That's what you're really trying to build here. <laughs> yeah. So for those listeners, Coterie ran a, a community service competition, basically asking agents to send in a video explaining how they help their community. And Rob's was the winner. Uh, can you talk a little bit, Rob, about um, what what you what you submitted and and what you've been doing in your community but basically we started collecting suits for veterans and as a veteran the transition out of the military is tough um and you don't have any clothes you really i had my uniforms and i had my golf clothes honestly when i got out of the military you don't have khakis you don't have button downs you don't have 
dress pants. You have nothing, you know, women, you know, blouses because you never had to wear it. You were told what to wear every day. And when you weren't in uniform, you were probably just hanging out. Um, so I connected with a gentleman um, called Save a Suit, which is where the money ended up going, who takes those suits and they become a symbol of helping veterans as they transition out. So they will do job fairs. They will go to large companies and say, oh, Mr. Large Company, you want to hire veterans. We'll show up with 100 veterans dressed. Um, no one says no to that. Um, and so we collect the physical suits, socks, shirts, everything in my office. They go, they process them. They have a tailor. They, they've learned how to do uh, online tailoring, which is kind of interesting, virtual tailoring. And they basically just post and veterans from all over the United States will say, yep, I need a suit. Here are my dimensions or whatever. And they can mail them a suit. Um, or they can, if they're in person, they can, or if they're close, they can come pick it up. But the suit really becomes a symbol of now we've got a hundred veterans, 400 veterans in a room. Now we can bring other resources. And the biggest one we bring is the VA and mental health. Um, we have a mental health issue in the military. Uh, we have a PT PTSD issue. We have a suicide issue. Um, so now we can bring those resources without the veteran really knowing what we're doing and hopefully try to help them. What advice would you give someone who uh, maybe has their own agency and, and hasn't done a lot of charitable or this kind of community service oriented work, but wants to get into it? Oh yeah. I'm, I'm actually doing a presentation um, in May at the Hawksoft user group to that exact question. So I'll give you the abridged version. First thing you find is find your passion, find what makes you tick. It could be homeless shelters. It could be children. It could be dogs. It could be veterans. It doesn't matter to me, but find something that's a passion that is directly impacted in your life. And then what you do is you now, how do I have an impact on that? You know, insurance agencies get hit up all the time to do little league and things like that. And I think we should do that. I'm not saying don't do that. Mm -hmm but that's not tremendous impact. So in what I decided with Suits for Soldiers, there's also an organization called Boxes for Soldiers. There's a lot of other stuff that I do for veterans is instead of working with not-for-profits and maybe getting frustrated sometimes, I just did it myself. Most people have a physical location. If not, then you figure that one out. But find something you want to have an impact on your community. And there's a lot of agents out there who I've met who are having tremendous impact. Um, but find something you can have an impact and then just kind of double down on it. And the important thing to remember, too many insurance agents think short term. I did too. The other thing is you got to think long term. And the other thing is you're not doing this to get insurance business. Mm -hmm. Never, ever, ever cross that line. Now you're that cheap insurance agent where you get compared to used car salespeople. And I get that. I have had people come in my office and say, well, you know, do I have to get an insurance quote? Do I have to? No, I, we don't even ask. I don't keep their name and phone number. I wish I did because I'd love to reach out to them, but I don't want them to think that's what I'm doing. And God forbid they get put in my marketing system. Then we have a problem. So we don't collect names, numbers. I had one gentleman came back three times with suits and finally said, are you going to quote me? I said, no. I said, that's not what I'm doing here. And he goes, will you quote me? I said, I will if you want to, but there's no obligation. So you have to have that mindset so people don't think you have an ulterior motive. I've, I've been accused of it. I've had people come in here and accuse me of it. And I tell them, walk into my office, let's sit down as adults and let's talk about it. And that's okay. I'm okay with that 100%. You're always going to have people that question what you're doing. But when the, when the conversation's over, they know where I'm coming from. But you have to stay true to that. This is not about direct sales. This is not about direct marketing. This is let's have an impact. Let's, it gets personally branded. I get known as the suit guy. People introduce me. Hey, this is Rob. He does insurance. He's a guy that collects the suits. And what I love about it, it's a very different conversation with that person. Now they ask what you're asking me. They assume by the end, I know what I'm doing, but I didn't talk about insurance. I mean, that's, that's how you make sales is not talking about insurance. Yeah. So, um, but I think that's a, a, a very clear line that you cannot, cannot cross 
because the other side of this is we get a lot of Vietnam widow veterans, their wives, right? The military was mostly men back in Vietnam. So I have these, I have 75, 80, 85 year old women walking in here with their husband's suits who have passed away, who served in yeah. Vietnam. I have to be true to that a hundred percent of the time because I have this woman who's willing to trust me with her husband's suits. It's some of these, I've had people bring suits that are five, 10 years old. They didn't know where to put them. And so I have to remain true to that because I'm looking this woman in the eye, telling her, yes, your suit will go on the back of a veteran. Here's where yeah. things go. Here's how this works. Here's all the websites. Um, and I have to stay true to that. And that's the other thing. If you're going to do something like this, you got to stay true to that. Stick to what you are. Keep your ethics. Keep your morals. It's not about getting business. It's about help leveraging your platform that you've built to help the community. Wow, that's so, um, I love everything you just said. Here at Coterie, two of the things we try to do just on staff just every day is find our passion and lead with integrity. And it sounds like you do both of those things. Wow, I, um, I might have to steal that. Very, I like that. <laughs> yeah, isn't that great? I love both of those. We have um, uh, the two of our core values. Um, and I love also your advice to another agent or agency to find the passion first, right? Don't just pick something because it sounds good. Find the thing that's going to feel meaningful to you that you're going to want to invest that time in, that you're want to, you're going to want to be known as, you know, the suit guy because it's a symbol of something really important to you uh, and authentic to who you are as a person. Yep. And, and, and it leads to many other things. Um, I mean, we did, we started with suits. We did a two years of comedy shows. A comedian called me and asked me if he, if he could leverage my brand. I said, sure. We did, we ended up doing boxes for soldiers. We did, we've done suit dry. I did the rotary tour. So I'm speaking on to rotaries. I knew the district governor. So I spoke at 15 rotaries over a year period, only talking about suits. Now, again, they're not asking me in to talk about insurance. No one would do that, but all these rotaries did suit drive for me. So now, I don't know, a couple hundred people now know who I am. Um, I got zero business out of it, but that was not the point. I didn't want business. What I wanted to do was make these rotaries aware of it. I have the local Kiwanis Club helping me out. They do a suit drive. They also help out with the boxes for soldiers that we do every year. Um, so this thing kind of blossomed and, and I'm the kind of person that will kind of jump out of a plane and figure it out on the way down. And, uh, so as these opportunities popped in front of me, I'm like, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. I can leverage this. Yes, we can do that. And it doesn't take a lot of time. I think people think that you, you know, you got to spend all this time, but again, what's our job building relationships. I've built hundreds of relationships with people that I never would have gotten a chance to speak to. And that's what it's all about. And the impact that we've had for the veteran is tremendous. Um, and that's what matters. But as you can tell by my voice and the way my voice has been pitching that it, there's a yeah. passion there, a hundred percent passion. And yeah. you yeah. made a great point. Don't just, you know, don't just pick something because it's already there. Yeah. I, I think it sometimes can sound sort of overly simple to say, just follow a passion, but it sounds like what you did is take an idea uh, that was important to you, start small, and then let it build on itself. Um, and it sounds as if that's been a really meaningful experience for you to, to really impact and connect people together who have this shared experience. And at the same time, organically, you're building up trust with people in your community around a range of different things, right? And I, I love your emphasis on, it's actually not at all about the insurance, don't cross that line. Um, but because you're being true to yourself and you're following a passion and you're focusing on that impact, I'm sure you're also building trust with a lot of people in your community uh, as, a, as a side effect almost, or, or oh, it yeah. co comes with yeah. in a way that is, is really organic and, and meaningful for how you are building relationships all, all around, all around you. Uh, it seems like it's a natural thing for you to do. 
um, as a person, uh, <laughs> which um, some of us, some of us have more or less of that ability. <laughs> I don't know if I would put myself but, but in that category, different... but yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's think about the conversation, Anne. Okay. If I'm sitting there talking yeah. about super soldiers, that's an easier relationship to build than talking about a BOP, a business office policy for your business. Yep. Right. It's just, it's different. It's, and so I tell people now you can have very different conversations with people as you meet them because people like doing business, with people they know, like, and trust. And I wish there was a better way to say that, but that seems to be the moniker we're using. And part of that trust and know and like is what I do. Now, not everybody likes the fact I collect suits for veterans. Not everyone's a fan of veterans and that's okay. I'm okay with that. That's, that's not the, the point. The point is that you can be introduced to people and you can have a tremendous impact in your community and it, it keeps expanding. You know, I, I will tell you when we mm -hmm. first started collecting suits, I got a, a box from farmers the day before Veterans Day. We were going to collect from November 11th to Christmas. So it's six weeks. I had someone come yeah. in and interview me from the local paper. One newspaper article, one, no social media, nothing. We collected 1,600 suits in six weeks. Think about that impact. Agency owners have to realize we all struggle every day to get how many leads can I get? How much lead generation and all this. And that's hard. It's really, really hard to do. And I'm not good at that. But when you're doing some community work, all you got to do is put it out there in a, in a, you know, showing a little humility, show, being humble about it or have someone else do it for you. But that's, that's my point. That's the difference is that the message is so easy to communicate and people jump on board. Who's not going to help? Who's not going to clean out their closets? You know, I love to joke, hey, those suits for during COVID, they they shrank. The dry cleaner shrank them or somebody shrank them. And and it's a network built on a shared a shared value, on a shared interest in in helping a specific community, um, which is not quite the same as meeting another soldier, but gives you or veteran, but but definitely gives you a starting point where you're already sharing something important um, that has meaning and value to it, right? So, um, wow, that sounds like it's been quite a ride. Um, and I'm so glad you could share your story and your experience with us here on this podcast and for all the listeners out there, um, because, you know, you've really made me think today about what am I passionate about impacting and what are some seemingly small things I could do to help that piece of, a, of my local community. So yeah. um, a really inspirational. Thank you, Rob. I'm so glad we had a chance to talk to you today. Oh, it's my pleasure. That what, what I always say to people, Anne, is everyone wants to help. Everyone has, you know, everyone's a good human being. We'll start with that assumption. Everyone wants, it's a lot of people just don't know how to, you know, and if you can offer them a chance to help and again, donate a suit, you know, if we all do a little yeah. bit, you know, we can have a tremendous, tremendous impact because it just grows on itself. Thanks for joining us today and listening to And I Quote, a podcast created by Coterie Insurance for insurance agents, brokers, and small business owners just like yourself. And I Quote focuses on how building relationships, networking, and community involvement can grow your business. Coterie Insurance is simplifying small business insurance for agents, brokers, and our partners. New to our website is the Find an Agent tab. This tab leads to local pages that help small business owners find agents in their area. If you're interested in getting your own page, click the link in our show notes. Thanks again for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next week.